Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I was waiting for that very enthusiastic response. <laughs> Good morning. There you go. There you go. Um, Mr. Dotson, thank you once again for last night. It was a lovely event. My honor. It was thank you to you and Teresa, and um, it was the Academy. Um, I thought they did a, a terrific job, and for those of you who have seen it before, it's been really quite a transformation there. And um, so, anyway, <coughs> important place for our community here. Um, also, just again, thank you to Mayor Tweedy for coming yesterday, City Council members, um, the Office of Economic Development. They're the ones who put the little goodie bags together. Many of the members were there last night. And, Marjet Upshur is the Director of Economic Development for the City of Lynchburg and really does a great job with Anna Benson and Lisa Merriweather and Andrew. And anyway, they were very well represented um, there last evening. Um, so anyway, just thank you all once again. Good morning, Mr. Miller. How are you? I'm wonderful. And you're Good. I hope you had <laughs> sleep in the night before. A little bit. There you go. <laughs> It was really nice to meet your husband last night, so thank you for allowing him to be with us. Thank you. Yeah, he really enjoyed coming. He was late as usual, but, you know. Ah. <laughs> but he says the same I, thing Actually, about you. do you all know after that he actually went back to the hospital for a while? He was just saving somebody's life, but he was a little late, know. you know. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Stinson, thank you for being here today. Good to see you. So um, with that, we're going to um, just conclude the three items from the workshop, and then we'll go into the action meeting. And so um, Director Mitchell, we'll start with you. Sure. Um, just a few highlights from our uh, rail committee meeting yesterday. Uh, in terms of our Amtrak ridership, we are still um, uh, seeing an increase in ridership since last year. We're up 5.4% year to date over last year's ridership. And that includes um, June of 2018 is actually 7% over, um, or June of 2019 is 7% uh, up from June of last year. So um, we're very happy to keep seeing uh, good ridership results for our Amtrak trains. Um, one announcement that I'm very excited about is that um, the town of Blacksburg's bus <coughs> service has been recognized by the American Public Transit Association as their top transit system in North America for small systems under four million riders a year. So it's a huge honor. Um, they are gonna be recognized in October at the, their uh, annual meeting, but um, very, very competitive and a huge honor for that state. So we're really thrilled for Blacksburg Transit. So um, from the rail committee, we um, did go through a new prioritization process that we're using for our rail preservation program. Uh, we got some great comments from this, the rail committee members. We'll be bringing that back to the full uh, CTB for a workshop item in September, <coughs> and we'll be looking for action on that in October so we can get it into our December grant cycle. Um, we also gave an update on our rail Indu industrial access program, and um, just a few um, statistics from that. Since 2010, the program has, um, uh, the, and the grantees that have received funds from our programs have generated 1,123 new jobs. Um, an equivalent of uh, 23,942 uh, car loads of uh, rail traffic, which equivalates to about 81,000 trucks uh, off the road, and also that 8.9 million in state funds has leveraged 308 million in new uh, private investment. So we're very uh, pleased about that, and we did give an update to the uh, rail committee members. Uh, we received an update as well from the Buckingham branch, from Steve Powell, the president of that, and he came and talked a little bit about his company, uh, their sh uh, how the short lines are faring right now, and also um, as a short line, how they also work with Amtrak and uh, passenger rail on their network. And then finally, we gave an update on um, the merit process and the new prioritization process in the um, <laughs> transit program and how that, um, how that translated into our new funding this year. Um, and we're gonna be giving an update on that to our Transit Service Delivery Advisory Committee, or TISDAC, at the end of this month. So um, that's it, my report from the Royal Committee. Oh yeah, also, um, we will send you all an invitation, but there's a group called the um, National Association for Rail Passengers who, who is organizing a tour of um, North Carolina and some of the um, uh, work that they've been doing out down there with funds that they received from a um, ARA grant or uh, the American Reinvestment Act grant from several years ago. Um, and they'll be uh, doing that tour, I believe, on August 1st and 2nd, and they um, asked us to extend the invitation to you all, so we will send something out about that um, to you guys in the next couple of days, so. That's great. Yeah, Madam Chair, 
Um, Jennifer, thank you for uh, yesterday's uh, internet blast that went out talking oh, sure. about the July comments. Uh, I thought it was very well put together, explains a lot about what's happening within DRPT. And uh, is it, from my standpoint, I'll enjoy reading it. I th I'm sure lots of other folks will as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. I know Rail yeah. had quite an um, entourage yesterday of members. Anything you all would like to add? To the Rail Committee. <laughs> I'll let Kathy McGee know that. <laughs> um, terrific. Commissioner? I just have a couple updates. We were going to do a presentation this month on the VDOT of the future. We've held that until September, but I did want to give you a quick update on the changes that, have, that we're experiencing within our executive team of the department. Uh, as I had indicated, the, the chief of administration uh, was retiring, Wanda Wells. Uh, Wanda's last day was supposed to be last Friday and maybe this Friday. Hopefully it's next Friday, but uh, <laughs> the longer we can hold on to her, uh, I'd be very happy. But uh, we've named Lisa Pride, our administrative services division administrator, to be the chief of administration. Uh, we've created two positions out of Wanda's position. We have a chief of technology and business strategy, Bob Osman, who is serving in our uh, IT director. And we'll give it again in September, we'll give you a little bit of a broader overview of, of some of these changes, but I wanted to recognize that. Um, the secretary certainly stole some of my thunder yesterday about announcing Bart Thrasher as our chief engineer, uh, replacing Garrett Moore. That was after a national search, and we're very happy to have Bart come up through the ranks of the organization and understand the organization, so it'll be a very valuable asset to us leading the, the chief engineer's role and responsibility. Uh, in the interim, I, Garrett Moore will be serving as a special assistant to me uh, for the next 60 days until his uh, final days with the agency, focusing primarily on uh, Interstate 66 project to be able to make sure we're going to deliver that on time and then uh, focusing on the Route 29 project, making sure that uh, the Vent Hill project opens up to traffic and, and focuses there. And so the only other pro position that we have in active recruitment right now is the Chief for Maintenance and Operations, and I'm happy to report that we are in a position where we're interviewing this week and next week and hope to have a selection here very shortly. So. Uh, to, to address Mr. Williams' uh, comment about is, are we going to replace BART, we have an active solicitation for the Richmond District Administrator position, so that's up and underway as we speak now. So hopefully in 60 days we can find a candidate, <coughs> but we're going to fill that position with the right person. You might be there for more than a year or something like that. I, I would think so. <laughs> Party is a credit to us, right? <laughs> it's a credit to us. So, Part of this is I know that we've been, we've been having a number of conversations on cost estimating and creating a task force, uh, recognizing that uh, the chief engineer was changing role and, and not knowing who that individual is. I've slowed down that task group until we named that individual. So uh, in August, Bart will be reaching out to Mr. Kasputz and Mr. Malvin to be able to pull that working group together. And, and start our cost estimating task force and, and starting that initiative. So more to come on that. I just figured it's not too, we can't mention Bart Thrasher's name too often, I think. So yes, we just started yesterday. Um, I just had two quick things. I woke up this morning and when I was turning on the news, it was on the Weather Channel and Mr. Moore, they were showing the road on 29, um, the national news was actually showing how the road was being imploded from underneath and for <coughs> anyone who would be in, it looked like a monster was going to emerge from the roadside <laughs> so there is a lot of work taking place along 29 and um, anyway I offered that viewing to you if you are so interested um, I just want to close my remarks um, for this meeting um, in this section on the fact that I know you all read last week um, that Virginia was once again named the best state for business, um, fourth time since 2007, um, with the three top areas being in workforce, education, and infrastructure tying with the cost of doing business here in Virginia, just creating a very strong business friendly environment um, here in the Commonwealth. Uh, I don't wanted to acknowledge there is so much that goes into making that happen from the governor's <coughs> office with General Assembly um, and with so many people across the board. But I did really want to recognize the work that this board does in contributing to that 
and the entire team across the entire Secretariat um, with DRPT, VDOT, Virginia Space, the Port of Virginia, um, uh, you know, all of our, the DMV, aviation, um, the OIP office with infrastructure and planning, um, just everyone across the board working together to create the platform for Virginia's economy. So I thank you all for the work that you do. Um, and with that, I'm going to close out the workshop. We will move into our action meeting. Um, Madam Secretary, I was going to recognize our state senator here. Well, I'm just about to do that. Thank you. <laughs> Remind <laughs> It's a lawyer, so he needs to keep working. Say that to me, Bert. Now, we are going to move into our public comment period. And with us today, we have um, State Senator um, Mark Peak. And um, Senator Peak knew we were closing out the workshop. And so I invite you to to come and address us. Thank you, uh, thank you, Madam Secretary. Well, nice to have you back in Lynchburg during the work day. I cannot tell you how much yeah. I love being here. I bet, <laughs> and uh, last time I was here, uh, your, your husband, Dr. Michael Valentine, was receiving the uh, award for heart surgeon of the year or the decade. Oh, or in this hotel. In this hotel, so nice to see y'all back. And quite a couple we have there with uh, Madam Secretary and Dr. Valentine, and I'm glad y'all got to see him last night. I've talked to some folks, and. I understand y'all have had quite a, quite a visit here the last two days, and it's always nice to have the board in, in the Lynchburg, and specifically in my district, I represent downtown Lynchburg, so welcome. I also had the privilege of serving on this board for a number of years under uh, Governor McDonald, so I know what you go through, I know the time commitments you make, I know the efforts you make to travel throughout the district to see each district and, and the choices that you have to make and I appreciate your commitment to the job. I'll tell you, I have, there are three holdovers here. Uh, Shep Miller wasn't really a holdover. He left when I did, has been brought back. He couldn't stay away. He could not yeah. stay away. And then we have uh, Mr. Whitworth and, and uh, Allison DeTunk. The last time I saw her was Robert Earl King concert in uh, Charlottesville, and Dixon, I haven't seen it in uh, quite a while. But I was gonna be sitting right where you are, Dixon. Jump seat. I was gonna be right there. <laughs> And, uh, and, and Governor McAuliffe had some uh, different ideas. different ideas, <laughs> which led to uh, Madam Secretary. I think he's smarter than some other people. He had some great ideas, and that did uh, has turned out very well for the Commonwealth and for Lynchburg. And, and now, Bert, thank you for your service. I want to thank all of you for what you all have done on the uh, Route 221 <laughs> Lakeside Drive interchange. I know you all had to approve that change. That's been one of the top priorities in Lynchburg for the past, since, since, that inter, since that intersection was constructed, it has been a traffic, uh, an accident nightmare. I don't know what happened, but the, the curves were wrong, the lights were wrong, it's been a dangerous intersection. We appreciate everybody <coughs> listening to uh, Mr. Dotson on that and, uh, and approving that project because we desperately need it. But uh, one other thing, I, I see a lot of holdover, the important people the people who've been here through all these administrations. And I, so I just want to com uh, compliment the Transportation Board, DMV, VDOT, for the professionalism of the, of the staff that they have, the employees, their dedication. They've now been under, they were under Bob McDonnell, they were under Governor McAuliffe, and now a lot under Governor Northam. Professional, as always, and, and just committed to getting the job done for the citizens of the Commonwealth. And that's what we need from the Transportation Board and the departments. Finally, I just, when I was on the transportation board, you know, we wanted to get projects into our area. And we we do what we could to get projects in the area. And then the all come in and you say, I asked for projects in my area, and then you all say, well, now that I'm a member of the general assembly, why don't you give us a little more money? And so it's a little different on this side of it. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I would love to give you more money. That's not my option. And it, the money is hard to come by, and we do remember it's the citizens' money, and that's why it's so important what you all do to make sure that the citizens' money is spent wisely, to keep an eye on how you do things. And I think you do things in a great way. Keep it up, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your stay in Lynchburg. Thank you, Madam Secretary. See you. Thank you for coming by. Could not agree more with your comments about the people who work within transportation and 
all the great folks who are here and the staff, so thank you for saying that. Um, we do not have anyone signed up for public comment. We did hear from a number of folks yesterday. Um, is there anyone here in the audience who would like to address the board? Brenda, is that a yes? <laughs> <I'm just saying. laughs> Go ahead and say it. Good morning. Okay, then. Um, do I have a motion on the minutes? Moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Okay, thank you. Mr. Hoffrichter. Good morning, sir. Uh, good morning, Secretary Valentine, members of the board. I bring before you a proposed abandonment of Frontage Road 163, lo known locally as Mallard Road in Spotsylvania County. This road is parallel to Interstate 95 uh, from the Thornburg exit, and uh, we're abandoning or proposing to abandon three tenths of a mile at the very end of the road. Uh, this was requested by the adjacent property owner, and the county is in support. Uh, we uh, posted a willingness to hold a public hearing. There were no comments submitted, no requests for a hearing. Or would you make that motion? Yes, I move that we embrace the motion as outlined. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 As opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Oh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> knew this was going to happen. <laughs> oh, oh, my. <laughs> Unfortunately, oh. Ms. Keene cannot be here. <laughs> Stuck with me. I think, is this your, your inaugural presentation? As the chief engineer, yes, ma'am, would That's be. what I mean, as chief engineer? Yes, yes. So, Welcome. Thank you. Don't be nervous. nervous. We'll try. <laughs> we'll do my very best to do that. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Don, you pointed out it's a trial period. It's <laughs> my favorite deputy. <laughs> Madam Secretary, members of the board, I did bring you today a change in limited access in our Northern Virginia District Office it is for the construction of a grade separated interchange at Route 7 and Battlefield Parkway. It is an extension of an established limited access line eastward along Route 7 to encompass the Route 7 and Battlefield Parkway interchange. A design public hearing was held for this project on March 7, 2018. A notice of willingness was posted for this on May 30th of 2019. The Leesburg Town Council by resolution dated <laughs> April 24th, 2018 has endorsed this project as presented at the public hearing. It does not require the approval of FHWA. It's on, not on the interstate system. So we request the approval of the extension of the limited access. I'll be more than glad to answer any questions. Second. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. As opposed nay. Congratulations. They all go this yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> They're all going to be like this. Ms. Pryor, good morning. Good morning, Madam Secretary, members of the board. I have one item for you today. It is the amendment of five projects to the six-year improvement program. Two are locally funded by Fairfax County, and the other three are um, funded with the new I-81 funding. These are in addition to the staff recommendation that we included in the final six-year program, if you recall. Um, pending a meeting of the advisory committee, hopefully later this month. We wanted to go ahead and add them to the program so that we'll be ready to advance them um, after that meeting. And I recommend your approval. I just want to reiterate that they will be presented to the 81 committee. Move. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. As opposed nay. Thank you, Ms. You. Pryor. Have a great vacation. Put it off just to be with us today. Oh, I didn't realize that, Miss Pryor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Vlasic. But we know you're not Mr. Vlasic. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Madam Secretary, Commissioner, members of the board. Good morning. I have three decision briefings before you today. Decision briefing number one, from the Smith County Board of Supervisors, Bristol District commemorative naming of the overlook on State Route 16, Park Boulevard at milepost 41.3, Smith County, as the J. Stewart Staley Memorial Overlook. The Smith County Board of Supervisors would like to memorialize the life, service, and contributions of, of Dr. J. Stewart Staley 
to his country and community. Dr. Staley was a veteran of World War II, serving in both the North African and the European Front, and was awarded the Legion of Merit for his service. He continued serving his community as a doctor and was instrumental in establishing <coughs> the Smith County Community Hospital. Dr. Staley passed away on January 6, 1997. Mr. Stinson. Madam Chair. Uh, Dr. Staley, his life is a uh, picture of public service, and uh, I uh, strongly and eagerly support this motion. Second. All those in favor, please rise. Decision briefing number two from the Nelson County Board of Supervisors, Lynchburg District commemorative naming of the bridge on US Route 29 Thomas Nelson Highway over Rockfish River, Nelson County as the Edward L. Emery Memorial Bridge. The Nelson County Board of Supervisors would like to memorialize the life services and contributions of Mr. Emery to his community. Mr. Emery was a lifetime volunteer and leader of emergency services in Nelson County serving as the chief of the Faber Fire Department, Captain of Nelson County Rescue Squad, and President of Nelson County Emergency Services Council. He was also a career employee of the Virginia Department of Forestry serving Nelson County, Central Virginia, and the Commonwealth for 37 years. He was a thorough professional, an untiring volunteer, no matter the emergency or need, and a devoted and selfless public servant beginning in his youth and continuing until his passing on January 31, 2019. Mr. Dodson. Madam Secretary, obviously I didn't know Mr. Embry, but looking at his uh, life, it was unbelievable. And this bridge is right on 29. Some of y'all be, uh, if you go north uh, to Charlottesville, it's on right past um, Lovingston. We make a little curve. There's a rest area on the right-hand side. So I would ask to, uh, like to move the resolution be approved to name the Memorial Bridge after him. Second. Decision briefing number three from the Halifax County Board of Supervisors, Lynchburg District. Commemorative <coughs> naming of the bridge on Route 683 Oak Level Road over Baltic Creek, Halifax County as Harmon O. Lewis Senior Memorial Bridge. The Halifax County Board of Supervisors would like to memorialize the life service and contributions of Mr. Lewis to his country and community. Mr. Lewis and his family owned the farm surrounding the bridge on Oak Level Road for 73 years. Mr. Lewis was a decorated World War II veteran who served in the 636th Army Quartermaster Company where he received the American Service Medal, the Bronze Service Star, the Philippine Liberation Medal, the World War II Victory Medal, and the Army of Occupation Medal. He also received the Farm Bureau Clean Water Award and the Governor's Model Clean Water Farm Award while operating his dairy farm and raising tobacco, corn, wheat, and soybeans. He was active in the American Legion Post, Woodman of the World, and was a lifetime member of the Oak Level Volunteer Fire Department. And a war veteran, someone in the community that everybody obviously emulates. I ask for a resolution to be passed uh, naming uh, Mr. Herman O. Lewis Sr. Memorial Bridge in Halifax County. Good morning, Madam Secretary, members of the board. Uh, last month, Joanne Maxwell briefed the board on the periodic regulatory review required by the Code of Virginia and by executive order. There were seven regulations she discussed with the board. Uh, the recommended disposition of those are, are contained in the board's resolution. For the, res for the regulations, it's recommended that they be retained as is. Two of the regulations is recommended to be repealed since the Code of Virginia already covers those two specific areas. 
and it's recommended that one regulation be amended. So unless the board has any questions, we'd ask that you approve the resolution. Second. Aye. Good morning, Madam Chairman and uh, members of the board. Have one item uh, that was briefed yesterday on the LED lighting. Uh, this is uh, bringing to the board for award of the contract for the pro project to train, subject to the following receipt of required approvals by Department of Mines and Mineral Energy, Virginia Department <coughs> of the Treasury, Office of the Attorney General, and the Governor's Office, agreement on all technical terms and conditions between the parties of the contract, and financing of the project by the Department of Treasury via the Virginia Energy Leasing Program. Uh, further, uh, part of the resolution uh, authorizes Commissioner of Highways or his designee, uh, granting the authority to execute uh, a contract for the LED project with substantively the same terms and conditions as presented to the Commonwealth Transportation Board. Aye. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Moore. <coughs> Mr. Latimer, good morning. Good morning, Madam Secretary and members of the board. We have one item from the Rail Industrial Access Program for your consideration. It's RF terminals. They're a transloading facility that is expanding operations on NIT, uh, the Norfolk International Terminal, to be served by the Norfolk and Portsmouth Beltline Railroad. They will be running 1,500 cars a year. With 12 new jobs, they're applying for $140,000 for the project. They have a $3 million total investment in this project. The uh, project received 60 points, and staff does recommend the project. Madam Secretary, I've spoke with these people several times. I've reviewed their plans, what they're building, and uh, it's impressive, and plus the complimentary impact to the port is very significant. So I move we approve this. Second. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Madam Secretary, <coughs> members this isn't an of the board, yeah. I have uh, two items for your consideration this morning. The first item is order number A48. This project was actually presented last month. We failed to get an actual um, action on it. We we almost got there, but uh, failed to yeah, actually vote. I just want vote. to point out the fact that I think it was the chair who said, wait, did we vote on that? Yeah. So uh, I'm here today to <laughs> represent this you project from last month. this out. <laughs> Sand. Sand. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> 48 is a Richmond District uh, bridge repair over uh, Route 76 and CSX Railroad. We had four bidders on this project. It slightly exceeded the... Um, development or the L&D estimate, but it was within the range of the evaluative estimate we recommend for your approval. Moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 The next project is a design build project. This is uh, the Albemarle intersection improvements. This is actually a bundled six project uh, uh, procurement that uh, we went out with. We had three bidders on this. The low bidder was <laughs> Curtis Contracting. Uh, the low bid slightly exceeded the L&D estimate by about 6%. It was within the range of the evaluative estimate. And after conducting our bid analysis, we believe that the uh, bid represents both market value and the fair value, and we recommend for your approval. Moved. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, new business, Mr. Whitworth, anything that? No, ma'am. Anybody, anything from the board? I have only one thing. Um, we're going to move immediately into the final two hours of the Smart Scale presentation this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Only for 
those who haven't heard it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. Madam Secretary, um, I was wondering if you could clarify for us what's going to happen around the governor's conference. Oh. Um, Roni, yes. Um, would you mind just kind of going over the schedule that we have um, coming up in the fall? Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. The Governor's Transportation Conference this year will be the week before Thanksgiving, um, November 20th, 21st, 22nd. It will begin on November 20th at the Hyatt in Arlington and will conclude Friday early morning. And we're going to build on our innovation theme and we're working on planning right now. <coughs> Registration will begin August 1st. Do we have a seat? We are going to, we are not, we are going to do a CTB meeting in September. We're going to do one in October. We will have the summit at the end of November and then the early December meeting. And a lot of that schedule is being dictated by the number of studies that we have and the number of them due December 1st that we need to approve. So I think this was the most efficient way for us to, to do it. Okay, thank you, Ms. Day. Anything else? Mr. Secretary, Mr. I, was Dodson. I was driving through 81 the other day and saw one of the uh, emergency vehicles, the VDOTs put together. Do service patrols? And it looked it ready to go. Felt real comforting. If I ran out of gas, I had, had somebody out there give me some gas. So it was good, good stuff. Thank you for mentioning that. Yes, those operational improvements have hit the road. Okay, with that, we are adjourned. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Good Williams. Good see you. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, you really do want those last two hours. <laughs> Thank you.